From the lanes in downtown Amesbury, this is Classic Candlepins. Hi again, everybody. Welcome back to Classic Candlepins. My name is Mark Ritchie. This is Nick Zaffalato. And today we're bringing you the third match in the ladder series. This is the fourth ladder series of the season. Uh, Jimmy Ayotte's been doing nothing but climbing the ladder all day long today so far. I uh, beat Nate Lees in his TV debut. He beat another friend of ours, Tim Jalbert, in his TV debut. However, his next opponent, this is not his TV debut. Uh, today's opponent for Jim Ayotte is a guy named Chris Sargent. And I think everybody that's picked up a bowling ball knows that name. Never heard of him before. Really? No, never have. Amazing. Um, However, we do have some stats for him. Freshie, why don't you go ahead and let him know some of the stats for this guy that you've never, ever heard about. Well, Chris Sargent's coming in with a uh, ho-hum 130 average, high single of 245, high triple of 530. He's 45 years old, and he's from Haverhill. Jimmy Ayotte, no slouch in and of his own right either. Has been, like I said, climbing a ladder, had a 30-pin victory last week. Tell us a little bit about Jimbo for the people who might not have seen. Jim Mayotte, he's carrying a high league average of 124, high signal of 190, high triple of 473. He's 25, and he bowls out of Manchester. Excellent. We're going to have the veteran versus the young guy, but both veterans in their own right. Come on back right after this, and we'll start this next episode of Classic Candle. <laughs> Welcome back. Classic Candlepins is our third match in our ladder series. Jimmy Ayotte versus Chris Sargent. This is the fireworks match, ladies and gentlemen. Jimmy Ayotte, the young veteran. Chris Sargent, the wily veteran. That, that was better, wasn't it, Chris? <laughs> We're all oh. good buds here. We all give each other a little bit of a rib now and then. But I think it's down to business right now. Jimmy Ayotte crushed a head pin. He's a two pin by itself. Saw these two on the uh, the last men's ladder, and oh, they just, just scooted it. by. Yeah, both of these fellas made it in from the last men's ladder. We did do the women's ladder in between, and you have to wait one ladder series before you can come back and try to qualify again. And both of these guys did, and here they are, back for more. Well. Can't blame him. Yeah. Sergeant actually hit a huge qualifying score the last one. Jimmy, right back on the oh. head stick, and there is the always ball we've been talking about all day. Big strike in the second box. Anybody that knows Chris Sargent knows you're going to need plenty of those. And up steps the world champion, world record holder, Chris Sargent. Qualified for the show in the last roll off that we had. As we tape this, it's April 3rd. Oh, great shot. Nice spare to start. The last roll off was yesterday, April 2nd. And Sarge was doing okay. He was in the middle of the pack, upper middle of the pack. And then in the last string, the fifth string, he threw a 179 to qualify himself second in the ladder. Yeah, I think he's had a few of those in his yeah, career. Probably a couple, you know. <laughs> oh, just missed. Takes out a couple extra. Still looking at three sticks for a 10 bucks here as the wood rolls off. And does a smart thing, went for two. Took out wiggle. one, got the other to wiggle, but when it's said and done, it's an eight bucks. Jim Ayotte comes in, averaging 124 in his league, bowling out of Manchester, New Hampshire. And just off the head pin. As we said, he's 25 years old. He's married. Lovely Stephanie. 
Oh. She couldn't be here today. She had to go work, but I'm sure she's sending all her good vibes down to Jimmy. Unfortunate forfill. They just slid by a little bit. That is better. It's made an out. adjustment. Got his eight box. Not very happy with himself, but that's okay. It happens. Just bounce back, you know? That's it. You know, you go to the next lane, you look at 10 new pins. I always thought, no matter what the box was before, the minute you push the button, oh. Oh. you see new pins. It's a brand new opportunity to change everything. I was taught... Threw, uh, threw a good ball. I, I was taught earlier in my career when I first started getting involved with the Pro League, uh, Bob Whitcomb, he, he, he told me, short-term memory. And uh, it's something that I, I try to, you know, live by when I'm uh, up on the lanes. It's the perfect advice. It, it doesn't matter even if you threw a strike last box. It's that's over now. You know, the next box is all that matters. Right. Bob's one of the classiest examples of like a gentleman in the game of bowling. He'll always take time to talk to somebody and give some of the younger guys advice. He's awesome. He really is one of the best guys. Good friend of all of us. Shout out to Bobby if you're watching. He does watch. He's told me a few times. Actually, my pro team was just down there bowling him. And he was saying he loves the show. He watches it all the time. He lives in Halifax, Massachusetts. I have no idea where that is. That is really far away. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's way over there. Oh, he tried to throw that wood over there, Mark. It was a decent play at it. It was an interesting read. Kind of a junky leave after crushing the head pin, but he takes eight. Move over to lane six, try to do some damage. Just kind of left it out there to the left a little bit. Took six pins. Semi-makeable shot. Two in the front, two in the back. Eight pin might be tough. Oh, stand get corrected. It nice and full, really hard. Just couldn't carry the three pin, so clean this up, hopefully for a 10. Yes, does he does. Just that. And four boxes in, we've decided absolutely nothing. Both bowlers are tied at 40. Action off the hip pin. A little hop, skip, and a jump ball. Look at this. Oh, oh great, great shot. shot. Splits the front. Got the pin to carry over on the sidewall. Take out the 10 pin. Jimmy's got himself a second mark. One strike, one spare. Fill that spare right now. Look at this. Great head pin hit. Takes out seven. Left the three, the five, and the ten. A little cluster in the right corner. Oh. And too heavy on the three. Just punches that out by itself. Then punches the five pin. Got a nine. 66. Devil's number. 66 oh, in the that's sixth. right. In the sixth. That's right. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> there have been some teams I've bowled on that they have the uh, little side pool things that they do. And one of them was if you had 66 in the sixth, you had to pay a dollar <laughs> into the pool. Try to save a lot of daughters, dollars by not doing that. But. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, Watch the head pin. Beautiful he left shot. Left seven ten. Got that wood to snap over. We're gonna take a look at that on a replay. Bonus ball. Seven. Oh, great shot. 
Made that shot go like nothing, Mark. I'm having a little scoreboard malfunction here. Ah, Jimbo punches the Worcester left. There we go. Everything's straight up now. Is he gonna do it? Ooh, Oof. great try. Just wanna just get some pins and get out of this one. Great. Oof, great scared nine. the 10 bucks. At nine though. Chris is starting to heat up a little bit. Jimmy needs to put one up here, give him something to think about. Pretty good ball right the there. Pin. Some late mixing. Oh. That front pin slid a little bit, didn't fall, but the wood hung around in the middle. That's gonna help him out, Mark. That's a huge help. Without the wood, this shot only goes on the first ball. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. just slid by the two pin. Not that time. 85 through eight. Chris Sargent has a bonus ball coming up. Sitting at 67 through six. It's a little splash action though. Mr. Headpin still carried six. He has a one, a three in the front, and then the seven and the nine in the back row. Puts it on the outside Look of the this, head Mark. pin. Hit it gorgeously. Wow. Got all the pins moving. And nothing took the seven pin. And the ball took it on that one for the 10. Now, Mark, were you, um, when Chris Sargent rolled his uh, 245 game, you weren't bowling with him at the time, were you? No, I joined that team out of Peabody the very next season. Ah, that's right. He did that at the end of the 2010-2011 season. Uh, from what I heard, it was nutso. <laughs> I mean, that's that's got to be quite a spectacle. Though, 245 to see. and one stringers. With a six-bagger in it. Absurd, yeah. Look at and this. he had wow. a two on the left, he had a triangle. It didn't matter what he had, because it's gone now. Outstanding shot Beautiful by Chris Sargent. Phenomenal. He sits at 93, plus a bonus ball after eight. Jimbo Jimmy. coming at it. Bounced it on the line, but dropped nine. No, we heard about that. Uh, a couple days after it happened, I heard that uh, Chris had tied the world record at 245. And there's Jim picking up a nice pair. I was lucky enough to join that team the very next year. Bowl with Chris. Some of the other great legends in the game. They did a really nice thing. They took a young guy on, myself at the time. Jimmy slide by for the two fill. Just missed the head pin again. Still staring down four pins. Jimmy seems to be leaving the ball to the right a lot at this moment. Hopefully he can make that adjustment at the end of this string coming into next game. I noticed that too. So 104 for Jim. Still a long way to go though. Yep. Chris has 93 plus this fill ball right now. Oh! Buries the head pin, leaves a wiggling kingpin. Piece of wood that's in front. Should twirl in. Might be oh, a problem, wow. but Chris throws that ball so hard that he just managed to stuff the ball right through. He hit the top of the cap, 
And the ball just nicked the side of the pin. Carried it for the spare. And the bonus ball. Wow. Carries big, it over for a nine fill. Big breakup of nine. Seven pin all by itself. That already puts him at 121. And he just slid by. Just slid by. It's still 130 at least. 130 even. So first game, the bowlers sit down and chat a little bit. Chris Sargent wins the first game 130 to 104. 26 pin victory heading into the second string and we'll catch up with that second string as soon as we see you on the other side. Welcome back, everybody. String number two. The two seed, Chris Sargent, bowling against the four seed, Jim Ayotte. Good match in the first one. Jimmy had a little tough game, but Chris threw a 130. He's winning by 26 pins after one. And he starts us off here in the second game. Missed the head pin, but a little late action. Carried it over. Now he had that, uh, that wood in the back roll out of the way, which is good. Gonna drive it, and he does. Hey, he stuffs it right home. Spare to start. Look at this, Mark. Yeah. Oh, big nine drop. Again, leaves only the kingpin. Five. Should be routine. Big fat piece of wood it on is. it. See you later. All done. Uh, Sarge is uh, picking up where he left off. Hot start uh, to the second game. Jimbo's going to want to uh, look to answer. He's more than capable. Absolutely. It's all about those little tiny adjustments that we make in and throughout the course of a night of bowling or whatever it may be. Just a little bit right. Almost got it to the head, but it was very close. He's got a favorable setup here. He's got the two in the front, one in the two, and then the seven, nine. Both back pins are covered with pieces of wood. Just slid by the head pin. Seems to be uh, missing right still, Mark. Yeah, he turned around and smiled. He knows. He's, he's trying to make those adjustments. There it is. That's, That's the ball. Beautiful That's the ball back. for 10. Now here's the key. You got to hit it again. He just hit that head pin, made his adjustment. He can hit it again here. There it is, Mark. He does, but drops seven. Ah. That's the good news. The bad news is it's the four, the six, and the ten. You almost wanted that backwood to stay on the deck. It might have been oh. a help. He tries to bank that four off the wall. No dice on it. It's a nine. Picks up. One pin for the nine box, so 19 for two. Chris is already at 29 plus a ball. When Chris finds his groove, get out of the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his, um, his five fill is a little indication of what happens when he finds his groove. His high average is 130. His high single is the world record tying 245. His high triple is a 530. Which is absolutely insane. It was insane. It was a five string roll off that he went to. His first three strings were 530. So yeah, get out of his way when he does that. But this is when it gets better. His high five string total is 808. 808, are you kidding me? I've seen uh, an 800 once. And wow, look at this. Oh, it fell. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to throw another one, Sides. You're good. <laughs> Chris tried to throw another ball. He's like, wait a minute, where'd the pins go? Thank you. 
I'd love to point out my lovely sister-in-law, Danielle, just brought me a fresh hot coffee. She's the best. Oh, there it is. He broke it up finally. There we go. Hey, Jimmy's figuring it out. He's finding it. Oh, <sighs> that is two pinna. Buried the front one and just only got the front one. Might have uh, learned that from you, Mark. Yeah, I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. <laughs> It's a ten Jim, box out of it. At least Jim didn't stare at me and give me the evil eye. <laughs> you, you have to ask yourself, like when you when you bury the front one that hard and you hit it that well, the, the odds of just stuffing it back like that are so so much lower than actually making the shot in general. It's really weird. And Jimmy goes for one of his weird strikes. <laughs> Saji got a weird one. Jimmy tried. <laughs> Saji crediting his. Veteran status. <laughs> Without a doubt. Yeah, Jimmy stuffed that in the pit convincingly. Spare in the fourth, matches the side <laughs> strike. Uh, all these guys are all, we're all good buds here. We give each other a little bit every now and then. There's a real what ball. What in the, oh. Such a good ball. Drop seven on it. Five, the seven, and the eight, all together, kind of, <laughs> with a piece of wood. Off the wall. Split the two pinner. Nine in the strike for 61 after four. Doing something right, folks, for 61 after four. And he leaves that one there for nine, 70 half. Chris Liz's hobbies and outside things as being an avid hunter wow. and an avid golfer, which I find a lot of the guys are. A lot of the bowlers that do this very elite level also can golf on a very high level, as Chris puts up another spare. I can, I can never get into golf. It's not very good at it. Never got into it? Nah. Never really gave it a serious run, but... I got thrown off a course one time for leaving divots that were like six inches deep. <laughs> they didn't, they, they, I guess they frowned upon that. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes. The problem is I was using my putter. That was half the problem. <laughs> the guy threw me off the green. I don't know what I did wrong. Uh. Jimmy put six on the mark. There's a four horseman oh. on the left. Mark, that's the second time he's cherried the front one. But you know, it's uh, sign in the right direction. Now he's now he's hitting his object pins. Right. Just a little too high. It's all Seems that, to have made that adjustment. It's that game of adjustments. You make it, it puts you in the right place, now you just tweak it. Yeah. Can I say tweak on the air? Can I say you tweak it? Yeah. I didn't say know. twerk. I said tweak. Tweak, twerk. That's okay, right? Yeah, I, I think that's fine. That's close. All right. <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> Light hit, leaves the Worcester right. The only problem with that is he doesn't have any wood to help him out with this. I, I know, and it's the second ball. This shot only goes on the first ball, like we were saying. It's another funny thing if you think about it. It really is. It's one of the easiest things to take out on your first ball, but on your second. Oh. <laughs> it seems like it just never goes. And when it does go for a spare, people, everybody stops and goes, wow, I can't yeah. believe it. <laughs> oh, yeah. But you do it on the first ball, and everybody goes, yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's normal. <laughs> so Jimmy's pinning like a wild man. He's 65 after six. He's only left one pin standing in the game, but can't seem to carry that extra for the spare. But I got a funny feeling we haven't heard of less Jim yet. He's going to keep going. Here's Chris filling his mark. Only takes out four. 84 after six, so it's 19 pins in the string. Damn, missed left. You know what's a little unusual, Mark, is we have only seen Sargent throw one strike. And that is It was very a backdoor unusual. one. Not, I'm not used to seeing this. 
I'm sure uh, many of our viewers that know the caliber of bowler that Chris is, they're not used to seeing this as well either. No, usually there's already a couple doubles put up. As we say that, Ooh. oh, almost. That was a great ball. <laughs> I thought that Fantastic was going for sure. Ball. Three and the five. The dreaded two pinner. And nope. He just slides by it. three. Still be over the century mark with two boxes left to go. Great ten. ten. Box. Much like last game, he finds himself at 102 through 8. It's a pretty good place to find yourself, game after game. Usually. That's a good place to be. <laughs> Jimmy's got to stop putting some marks up. Fantastic <sighs> ball. He's getting it on the head pin now. Lost it for a little while, but that's a couple good boxes in a row that he's crushed it. It gets frustrating when you do that and you, you think you found it, but the pins aren't rewarding you. He's going to try to get it over. Ooh. Got the back pin to bounce. Great tried try. to fly over there, just ran out of real estate. <laughs> Take nine. I'd like to see him lay down a big hammer right here. Ooh. <laughs> well. Or God. scoot the five pin over about three inches. You know, Drop honestly, six. I, I, I don't mind this. Personally, I don't. I actually think it might benefit because that wood's a little further over. Ah, you missed right. Might keep something in play here. Even for the ten box, there's still a couple extra pins that all count. Still there's a lot of bowling to be done. That's right. There's not a single pin that you look at that doesn't count. Doesn't matter where, when, or how. Tough eight box. Yes. Sarge will step back up to finish his second game. Sitting at 102 through eight. Oh, oh vicious, vicious strike. Well. Took him into the second game, but he finally has thrown his first hammer. Well, legitimate hammer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The other one was a little tricky. First bonus ball. Blows right through the middle. Gets five pins. Is that spread eagle minus one of the corners? Oof. No, oh, Chris chose to go after it a different way. I think he was going for the fill more than the shot. That's what I would do at this yeah. rate. Wow. Well, the seven box will bring him to a 125 game. And that'll put him at 255 through two. Yeah, Jimbo's really got to, he's got to get a break in here sometime. He's got to start getting these spins to move around for him. Great ball to get it going. Drops eight. You call this one for sure. I don't dare even look at this. I'm not looking at this one. It's the curse. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Maybe we should just have a silence when uh, two pinners come up. Huh? I, we should probably do that going forward. Just I think we're going <laughs> to. Somebody shooting at a two pin, I think we're just going to stay silent. <laughs> Somebody will shoot us if we keep uh, overanalyzing them. <laughs> Somebody's going to cherry a two-pinner somewhere, <laughs> nowhere near here, show up on tape day and scream at us. <laughs> Speaking of that, thank you to everybody who's come here and watched our tapings. There's Jim dropping nine. Is that always, Ball? Come here and watch the tapings, or even if you're just watching us on YouTube or Amesbury Community Television, thank you very much. Not by, by a bucket. He's, uh, he's showing real signs of frustration, Mark. He's held it together for a long time. Hopefully things get better for him in the next game. 
Good sign of sportsmanship from the fellas. So here we are after two strings. Chris Sargent, 255. Jim Mayer, 205. It's a 50 pin lead going into the third string. And we're going to bring that to you right on the other side. And here we go, folks. Game three. Chris Sargent versus Jim Mayotte. Jimmy Mayotte's going to start it out on lane seven. He's down 50 after two, so he's going to try to look to get things going real big. He's been bowling well. He's only been missing by a little bit when he's been missing, so. Right. Little tiny, tiny little adjustments and try to bring it back here. Yeah? Big game changes everything. You said it the other match. Random double strikes here or there. Yeah, he just missed that one. It's a tough opener. Well, lucky seven to start, as they say. Move over to lane six. This. And a little bit of late action. Takes out seven pins. He's staring at the head pin in the front. Four seven down on the left. Nice piece of wood behind the two pinner. And yeah, he, he brings it, it home. So you needed that do, one. Mark. When you're down uh, 50 pins, you got to do it early and often. Yes, you do. Making beautiful shots like that will definitely get you going. Up steps Chris Sargent. He buries the head pin, leaves a check mark on the left side. Two, four, five, and seven. I'm reading the list of some of the accomplishments Chris has written down for us. He's won the World Team Championships twice. Most guys never even get it once. It's only twice? <laughs> I know, it seems <laughs> about it eight less that, than it should be. He's won the World Singles Championship twice as well. Anytime you wow. can get your name in the sentence of world champion, world tournament, anything like that, and you're involved and you got a W there, that is elite. As Chris drops eight, makes the two pinner for the spare. That's why I didn't say anything about it. I was talking about something else. That's why he made the shot. <laughs> See, that was strategy right That's there. That's right. Made a, I made a point, and it worked out good. We're helping our bowlers out here. I'm trying to. Bonus ball. Jimmy wow. buries the head wow. pin. Only gets three. Punches out the one, eight, and the nine. Marcus, that old saying goes, when it rains, it pours. Yeah, and it's pouring for poor Jimmy right now. Takes out just the five with the second ball. He's gonna try to clean up two or three anyway. Hopefully three or four. Oh boy. And he only hit the curtain there. Now Mark, you had mentioned earlier in this broadcast that we do all our taping on the same day. We do. Do you think that fatigue has anything to do with this? Or it, it could be playing some sort of role? It has to. I mean, this is Jim's ninth game. I mean, the, all the guys that you'll see on this show, you know, they're endurance bowlers. We've all been to the 10 string tournaments. We've been to the 20 string tournaments. Great shot. Jimmy gets himself a spare. But this is different. This is, this is very different. I think it's a different type of endurance though. Because you're rolling two at a time. I was just about to make that point as I was doing the scoreboard. Two boxes at a time is a very different situation, especially under the TV lights as well. Mm. Oh, wow. Ooh. Awesome shot. Chris with an A fill and then makes a beautiful kick off the sidewall. Kick the three pin right down into the 10 for a spare. Mark Sarge is starting to find his groove. Yes, he is. 
Oh, he left that one and he turned around as soon as he threw it. Only three. That one a bit hotter. And the high low jack. <laughs> he just turned around to Jim and said, If I make it, what do you give me? <laughs> it's an homage. Oh! oh baby! <laughs> <laughs> That's an homage to the old Channel 5 bowling show where they would shoot that at the end for a progressive jackpot that would build up. Chris just said he hit that on Channel 5 for seven grand. I don't doubt it. Wow. We don't have that kind of prize pool here. I can give him a free soda, like he said. He said, I'll take a free soda. Okay, you can have a Sprite later. <laughs> oh, Jimmy gave the Sprite Eagle a run. Oh! And a very interesting 10 box. Jimmy turned around and all but busted out laughing. Yeah, he's keeping his spirits up. He's having a tough one, but you're going to find a little joy every once in a while. That was a funny little 10 box. That was pretty interesting. It was. <laughs> and he throws a huge ball, drops nine, and a helicopter. It was one of those Frederick pins, bleh, Fredericton pins again. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and he yep. it. <laughs> and a big spare. Jimmy got another one. Chris. Wow. Oh, Sergeant. Anybody Keeping hurt it back going. There? Big strike. That was a no doubt. Oh, that was a thunderball right there. Yeah, thunder with a little lightning. And could have been a double. Well, he got a double, just not the double we were predicting. That's true. It's the double on the other side. Because I will not say two-pinner anymore. <laughs> well, see, that, that two-pinner had a little help. Yeah, you can say it after the fact now. <laughs> it doesn't, I'm still not going to say it. I've cherried them in places that you never should have. So after six boxes, Chris has 81. Jim has 58. They're both working on bonus balls. Jim just gets his two. I think he's just trying to grind through it at this point. You have to. There's nothing you can do. That ball was going right at the head pin, too. And just kind of tailed, found the hole. Jimmy trying to compose himself, doing a good job of it. Throws a great ball, carries out a few extras. We got eight or nine, we got a fall. Nope, just eight. This is the proverbial can't buy a bucket string. This is very uncharacteristic of Jimmy Ott. Jimmy seems to have stuck at the line a little bit right there. Ow. Put the ball right back on the middle. Still staring at a couple of them. Still staring at one of them. Nine box. Poor kid, you hate to see one of your buddies have to go through a string like this. Yeah, it's... You know the guy's better than what it is, and the pins just aren't giving him any kind of break or help. Oh. Chris punches out a spread eagle. Brings him to 85 for six. Off the wall. And then, look at this. Great Bangs try. Bangs around a few pins. It really was a great try. Still looking at three. Still looking at three.
Chris is 45, lives in Haverhill, as we were saying before. He's a grounds worker. Has a beautiful little daughter named Miranda. I just missed it. See, I tried. I didn't say it. And it still didn't go. Hey, yeah, picks up the 10. Well, he's pretty consistent through the eighth box. Another 102 through eight. <laughs> you know, that's that's a spot you want to be. You want to be right around 100 after eight, seven or eight boxes. Give yourself a chance. Here's Jimmy finishing up his day. Jimmy's had a hell of a run all day today. Two wins. Still 15 and three on television that's lifetime. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's still, <laughs> if that's any consolation. I'd take five to one odds if they gave them to oh, me. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Beats There's my odds. Nice. I'm not even in the positives yet. <laughs> It's not easy getting W's on TV. It is not easy. It's a Tennis. lot of fun, though. It is. Wow. Jimmy, probably one of the best balls of the day. Got it into the head pin pocket. It's a two pin, huh? <laughs> it's the. <laughs> it leaves the 7 10. Hey. Oh, ball bounced back out. Knocked over the seven pin. And Jimmy hits 10 pin. The last pin he aimed at for the day. Unfortunately, it's only a 97. Tough 302 series for Jim Ayotte. Very tough. This is just going to be routine for Sarge. He's already got this wrapped up. We call these the victory boxes or the victory ball, however you want to put it. Chris has moved on. He will bowl. Next week, another very young and up-and-coming bowler, Nick Norcross, veteran of the TV Candlepin Wars and all the other platforms that Candlepin's on. How's good friend of ours, too. Very good friend, former teammates of mine. I used to coach him when he was in the kids' league years and years ago. That shows you how old I am. Well, I'm not really old yet. I'm getting there. Yet. I'll be 35 in July. What the heck is going on here? I have no idea. There's things moving and everything else. So he hits the head pin. Seven and the nine. This is more of a crowd pleaser if he makes it. Oh, he scared it. Scared it big time. That will not count. <laughs> For a nine, a 121. So Chris will win the match, 376 to 302. Great run by Jim Ayer today. He was on three of the shows, two wins. But Chris Sargent will take the victory. And we'll speak with Jim Ayer right on the other side. Everybody, welcome back to Classic Candlepins, the post-game show. I'm um, here with Freshy and Jimmy Ayotte. Uh, Jimmy, three shows today. Did great, two wins. But uh, Saji kind of had your number there at the end there, I guess, huh? Yeah, a little bit. I really didn't put up much of a fight myself. Uh, you know, I just didn't go my way and couldn't quite get a good grip on the ball. Just Yeah, it just looked like it wasn't as electric as it was earlier. But that's all right. That's three shows, three appearances. And hey, it's still you're 15 and three. Lifetime on television, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty damn good. Jim, I, uh, I noticed that you, you were missing right a couple times at the beginning, but you quickly made the adjustment. Even when you made the adjustment, just you couldn't seem to get a break and get things going your way. Uh, I thought you rolled a great ball after you made that adjustment. Just bad case yeah. of no luck, you know? Yeah. But uh, I'm sure we'll see you back on the show. Oh, definitely. I'll definitely see this man back on the show. Congratulations, buddy. Great run today. So next week, Chris Sargent keeps rolling, and we will find out who the next entrant into the Tournament of Champions is going to be as young Mr. Nick Norcross comes into town. 
and tries to get into the tournament. He's been here before, and we're going to see if he can get it done in the finals. Chris Sargent's one heck of a guy, so tune in next week to see who gets into the Tournament of Champions. For Freshy and the whole rest of the crew, I'm Maki Pins. We'll see you next week on Classic Candle Pins.